Well, hello, everybody, and welcome back to your journey through the book of Leviticus. This is Pastor Brandon, and we just want to walk through the book of Leviticus one chapter at a time. And I want you to think of it as though you and I are sitting across a coffee table, and we're just talking through it, just kind of kind of being a tour guide and sharing with you some of the different things through the maybe most challenging book in the Old Testament, just because it is so far removed from our everyday life, but it's still powerful and it's still awesome and worth doing. And as we were saying, the goal of the book of Leviticus was to keep this nation that was, you know, these people were born into slavery and now they're free and God wants them to stay that way. He is invested in their freedom and he wants them to stay on this path toward being free. And so he does this by having straightforward rules so they know where the boundaries are and how to worship him so that he can encounter them, they can experience him and they can live in his favor. And that ongoing metaphor or example I was using is, you know, my girls are about age where they're able to drive and it would be absolutely a tragedy. Like I wouldn't do that to them to just give them the keys to my car and just hope it went well. But rather I teach them the rules of the road so that they can enjoy their freedom. They can get out there and explore the world. They explore the world through healthy boundaries. And that's exactly what the book of Leviticus is all about. Chapter one was about burnt offerings. What to do when you have sin? You bring it to the Lord. Chapter two was about the first fruits. When you have grain and different things, what do you do? You bring it to the Lord and worship. Chapter three is what we do when we want to celebrate with the Lord. They're peace offerings. And what these were is, depending on the translation you might look at, they're also called fellowship offerings. And what these were for is basically having dinner with the Lord. They were entitled, or not entitled, but intended to be a time when you would bring this offering to the Lord as a way of saying thank you to Him and wanting to fellowship with Him. And it was a meal that you were going to have with the Lord. In Deuteronomy chapter 12, and then later on in Leviticus chapter 7, there seems to be this indication that you would then take part in some of this meat that was cooked. And so some of it went to the Lord and some of it, the person who was offering would get to eat. And it was just an idea of a festive meal that you would kind of have with the Lord and expressing your joy at being able to have communion with God. And so as we read this together today, we're going to read straight through this chapter. When you think about it, as God is saying, I want you to come and have a meal with me. And when you do it, this is how you prepare it. And you're going to see toward the end of it, if you're reading along with me, and I hope you are, reading out of the New Living Translation. And as we read along, you're going to see how God is saying this about do it this way, do it that way, let's have a meal together. And then there's a certain portion that was considered to belong to the Lord alone. I want you to pick up on what that is, and we get to the end of the chapter, we'll explain it. Okay, here we go. Chapter 3, verse 1, reading all the way through to verse 17. Here we go. Verse 1. If you present an animal from the herd as a peace offering to the Lord, it may be a male or a female, but it must have no defects. Lay your hand on the animal's head and slaughter it at the entrance of the tabernacle. Then Aaron's sons, the priest, will splatter his blood against the sides of the altar. Verse 3. The priest must present part of this peace offering as a special gift to the Lord. This includes all the fat around the internal organs. Verse 4, the two kidneys and the fat around them near the loins and the long lobe of the liver. These must be removed with the kidneys. Verse 5, and Aaron's sons will burn them on top of the burnt offering on the wood burning of the altar. This is a special gift and is a pleasing aroma to the Lord. Verse 6, If you present an animal from the flock as a peace offering to the Lord, it may be a male or female, but it must have no defects. If you present a sheep as your offering, bring it to the Lord. Lay your hand on its head and slaughter it in front of the tabernacle. Aaron's sons will then splatter the sheep's blood against all the sides of the altar. The priest must be present or present the fat of the peace offering as a special gift to the Lord. This includes the fat of the broad tail cut off near the backbone, all the fat around the internal organs, the two kidneys, and the fat around them near the loins and the long lobe of the liver. These must be removed with the kidneys, and the priest will burn them on the altar. It is a special gift of food presented to the Lord. Verse 12, if you present a goat as your offering, bring it to the Lord. Lay your hand on its head and slaughter it in front of the tabernacle. Aaron's sons will then splatter the goat's blood against all sides of the altar. Verse 14. 
the priest must present part of this offering as a special gift to the Lord. This includes all the fat around the internal organs, the two kidneys, and the fat around them near the loins, and the long lobe of the liver. These must be removed with the kidneys, and the priest will burn them on the altar. Listen to this. This is a special gift of food and a pleasing aroma to the Lord. All the fat belongs to the Lord. Verse 17, you must never eat any of the fat or the blood. This is a permanent law for you, and it must be observed from generation to generation wherever you live. So if you notice, he was saying, hey, if you bring this kind of animal, bring that kind of animal, if you bring a sheep, whatever it is, you bring it to the Lord, put your hands on it, and then they will take a certain part. First, they'll, they'll kill it. That's what they do first. And then they will take a certain part. And that certain part, the, the kidneys and the different things, those are for the Lord. The rest of it, you get to celebrate and eat almost like you're having dinner with God. Now, I had told you to notice, was there a part there that only belonged to the Lord? Did you notice what it was? Yeah, it was the fat and the blood. You weren't supposed to take any part of that. Now, first of all, you weren't supposed to take any of the blood because the blood was considered sacred. It was considered to be something that was not intended for people to eat. It was a big time prohibition against that. The fat, we don't know. There's a lot of different ideas attached to why God said the fat belonged to him. Don't eat the fat. For people who are big time health uh, nuts, they say, well, God didn't want anybody to get a heart disease. Maybe that's true. I don't know. Uh, some people say that, especially during the culture of the time, the fat was considered to be the choicest part of the animal. And so it was reserved for God alone. We don't know. But what we do know is, is that God had very specific instructions so that you could have this opportunity to take part in this offering with the Lord. So what's the overall principle of this passage? Well, to me, when I look at this, I think the overall principle is that God wants to be in fellowship with his creation. God wants you to have an encounter with him. He wants you to be in fellowship with him. He's provided a way to say, you know what I want to do? I want to do something in your life that's so awesome that you're going to want to come and tell me about it. You're going to want to be in fellowship with me. So let's come and have dinner together. Present this offering, and we are going to enjoy this time together. And so God wasn't wanting his people to just offer these sacrifices and go away. This was intended to be an experience where you celebrated with the Lord. So even in the middle of all these rules and all these guides, God is providing these so that you can have an encounter with him. When we look at this New Testament example, the Bible talked about how Jesus would have a meal with his disciples and he would say, long have I waited to have this dinner with you. And so you think about God having to do this in this detached sort of way in the Old Testament. Then in the New Testament, Jesus walked among us for 33 years. You imagine, there probably wasn't a bad day. God had been wanting to walk with his people from all the way back in the book of Genesis when we were in the Garden of Eden. That's what God wanted, was that close relationship with his people. And in this way, we're able to connect with him again. So I want to know from you, what stood out in you? I'd love for you to hear in the comments below. If I put this on my blog, wherever you can, let me know what stood out to you in chapter three. I'll see you next time for chapter four.